I use, at the moment, a mix that's as close to 100% Fiji vegetable glycerin as I could possibly get, with the addition of between 5 and 7.5% and of ethyl maltol, ethyl maltol, call it either one. It's essentially flavoured, but slight uh, unflavoured. Sorry, it's essentially unflavoured, but slightly sweetened. The reason being, if you don't have the ethyl maltol in with a glycerin mix, to me it tastes like Frankfurt is a little bit, and I don't find it pleasant. But that little bit of ethyl maltol just makes it nice. And a number of people have tried what I use and say it tastes just like a fag. I've got no idea where that comes from because it doesn't to me. But never mind. So right, yes, effectively flavourless, but for a donkey's age I used RY4, RY5, RY6, various different flavours. I'm not a big lover of strong flavours, I find them difficult to cope with. If I'm going to use a flavour at all I like it to be subtle. Lychee and rose is quite nice but subtle, has to be subtle, don't like strong flavours. However, I do understand that some folks like a really strong flavour of whatever it is that lights their candle, floats their boat, makes their taste buds in. I get that. And what I'm hearing from a lot of folks is it helps them distance themselves from lit tobacco, because obviously something that tastes very strongly of, oh, I don't know, strawberry, doesn't taste anything like tobacco and therefore if they were even tempted back to a, a lit tobacco fag and tried one it would taste absolutely vile they might retch and throw up and vomit and that's cool that's that's a good thing it's a good thing if you, if what you are using now makes you not like what you used to before it's nothing against people that smoke lit tobacco it's just it can be nicer more enjoyable even if you're using an EC. I get that. But we've got these daft beggars that are trying to ban flavours. Like I think they think that flavourless e-juice tastes like a fag. But it doesn't. It can't. It's not lit tobacco. If it was lit tobacco then it would taste like lit tobacco, but it's not like you flavoured a tobacco cigarette. In fact, any flavouring that you have in an e-cig is a pure flavour, and you decide what it is. But anyway, you've got these crackpots in the World Health Organisation that are talking about banning flavours altogether. And they haven't thought it through, have they? Think about this, assume for a moment that the only thing you can buy in the way of e-liquid is completely flavourless. It's either VG and nicotine or it's PG and nicotine or it's a mixture of VG and PG and nicotine. But with no added flavours. That's all you can buy. Do they honestly think that people will put up with that? Do they honestly think that people will not go to Tesco or Asda or Sainsbury's or Waitrose or wherever and buy cake flavourings, food flavourings? Of course they will. They're bound to. And here's where the problem rises. Dr. Ricardo Pelosa and Dr. Farsalinos have both said Lipoid pneumonia is impossible with standard e-liquid, whether it's a PG e-liquid or a VG liquid, neither PG nor VG is a lipid. They are both alcohols of a kind, 
the glycerols, but they're not lipids. Therefore, they cannot cause lipoid pneumonia, as it's a contradiction in terms. However, certain food flavorings are oil-based. So if the World Health Organization gets its own way, bans all the flavorings that people have put all the research into to make sure that they are as safe as they possibly can be, then folks who fancy tarting up their bland, horrible, untasting e-liquid that the World Health Organization has approved, they will go to Weight Rose or Sainsbury's or Asda or Tesco or other dirty great big shops are available. And they may well buy an oil-based flavoring which they will then mix with their bland, horrible, nasty PGVG nicotine mix and then run a risk of lipoid pneumonia whereas previously using PG based flavourings and VG based flavourings that was not the case. An unintended consequence do you think? Could be. Or it could be that in their ideological fervour they haven't done what scientists are supposed to do and that's examine evidence and consider all the possible scenarios. So here's a message for the World Health Organization and anybody else who espouses the notion of banning flavorings in e-cigs. You're a numpty. It's not going to help. It's not going to stop anybody from using e-cigs. What it will do is increase the risk of using e-cigs from something minimal to something rather less minimal as risks go. It's a bloody stupid idea. Flavours are there for a reason. People enjoy them and as long as they are available to them they'll enjoy them more than they enjoyed smoking lit tobacco if that's the way it works for them. And for the majority of people that's the way it works for them. I used to smoke 60 a day and quite honestly had e-cigs not come around I'd still be smoking 60 a day possibly even more because I've got time on my hands. The fact that I use electronic cigarettes, e-cigs, PVs, personal vaporizers, call them what you like. The reason I use them is because I enjoy them more than I enjoyed fags it's that easy honestly some people make you wonder how they've actually managed to get into the position that they are so flavorings leave them alone leave the flavors alone we need flavors people need flavors flavors are a good thing thank you very much